Well, guten Tag, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, junge, jungen und f Mädchen. Kinders of all ages. My name is Dogboat Dry 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 und willkommen auf the New Order Last Years of Europe as the Greater German Reich. Now, last video, um, sorry, your typical Germany campaign. Uh, Hitler is sick. Uh, we made Heinrich, uh, not Heinrich, he he Reinhard Heydrich the successor, and we're currently working on shooting liberals, in, uh, intimidating politicians, and getting rid of democracy. So, you know, fu fun stuff. Any other man would have admired the beautiful scenery that surrounded him. Any other man would have breathed the fresh air with deep satisfaction while surveying the rolling green hills. Any other man would have listened intently to the melodies of nature, from the chirping of the birds to the buzzing of the grasshoppers. Not Dr. Karl Brandt, who was watching the fear like a hawk, ready to leap forward in an instant. Despite his deteriorating condition, Hitler had generally asked Brandt if he could maintain his old ritual of scrolling to the tea house on Muslanfne or Kalf Hill. Ulysses Schab had soon caught one of us, and despite Brandt's numerous protestations, forced him to adhere to the Fuhrer's orders. That smug sycophant was striding alongside them, inhaling deeply as he basked in the sunlight. Imagining that idiot tripping over and smashing his face upon a rock gave France some modicum of relief. Hitler suddenly halted in his tracks, panting heavily. Brandt dived forward just in time to catch the old man by the shoulders as he collapsed backwards like a puppet without strings. His face was pale and covered in sweat, and his breathing was raspier than usual. Brandt gently lowered him to the ground and turned him on his side, tearing off his own jacket to place under the Fuhrer's head in anticipation of a seizure. As he suspected, Hitler's body soon began to jerk uncontrollably. Don't just stand there! Brent shouted at Schaub, who was staring at the two of them in distress. Get Kempfer! Now! Schaub nodded and raced back the way they had come. After a few minutes, the seizure stopped. Hitler was breathing raggedly, clutching the dirt beneath his hands. His eyes were, f were f filled with tears. At last, the car arrived. Eric Kempfer leaped out of the driver's seat and thrust open the back door. Brandt slowly helped Hitler to his feet and guided him towards the vehicle. <sighs> Place Sophia under a 24-hour medical watch. Now! Adolf Hitler's health is currently critical. Ambassadors are no longer expelled. You know, the game's not going to matter too much. Just get more here on our side. Our influence is minuscule, but it's not going to matter at the end. You're mobilizing ZSS. Fear lives in Germany. Invited. Welcomed. It cradled in the heart of every person and locked in their minds in silver austere cages. Fear lives in the children who stop their games of street football as soldiers clad in black and adorned with mortality march in sharp columns. They whisper to each other, dreading what they do not know yet still, with horrifying accuracy, understand. Fear, in the li fear lies in the soldiers who eye each other with suspicion and murder. They see the battles and bombs turned inwards on themselves. They see their own mangled bodies trampled underfoot by the children who will fight the war they could not. Fear lives in Heydrich. Nestled close to his heart, it bears in tandem, composing a vile rhythm. All Heydrich knows is fear. He fears the children. He fears the soldiers. He fears his own fear. His preparations cannot alleviate his terror. They embolden it. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. Okay, we might as well get working on replacing garrisons. The Reich's major metropolitan areas is the here is entrusted in garrison duties, supposedly to keep the peace. In recent years, with the majority of the Reich's cities engulfed in protest and crime, they fairly, clearly failed in their missions of order, thereby providing us with the Casus Belli to replace these failures with proper national socialist men of a Schutzstaffel who, unlike the Wehrmacht, will succeed in restoring order. And where we go, yeah? Land fort. Do you want to do any other building? Uh, 
Oh, that's a very important war. The Great German Reich has long eyed Iceland with the utter, utter contempt. After all, the island was Achilles' hill in the Reich's strategic planning. Wars was a fact. They allowed it to become um, so. With the end of the Second World War, they willingly allowed the Americans to assume control of the island. The Americans had fortified the island over the last 20 years into an impenetrable fortress. Its coastline with built boxes and bunkers, and its inner fields plowed and lined with concrete to support the vast weight of the B 52 st Strato Fortress, the nuclear first strike capacity of the Americans which was pointed like a dagger at the heart of the Reich. It was a surprise of a German high command when the Americans announced that they would be extending Iceland's exclusive economic zone, citing issues with British fishing trawlers in the area. A plan was quickly drawn to, up to protest this thinly veiled attempt to seize the economic viability of a pact member. The Kriegsmariner will be mobilized into the North Sea to protect British trawlers from trans any transgression. Wir dein in Deutschland! Hopefully, it'll work out. Um, I'll have to be very careful, because I don't want... Dear Reichsminister Hewell, today I write to you on behalf of my government on an important topic that has just come to light here in Washington. We have been made aware of your Kriegsmarine violating the new economic exclusion zone of our ally Iceland. We request you stop this provocative and dangerous action at once or my government will be forced to respond in a way unfit for its new age. To enforce our allies' waters, we warn you that we will be no mobilizing we will be mobilizing our naval forces in the area to counter any aggressive moves made by your government. We hope that you will see sense in our actions and requests and leave Icelandic waters to the Icelanders. American posturing, pay no heed. I swear to God, if we start World War II right now, or World War Three right now, oh, not gonna be good. That would be a hell of a fucking one. The hope of recent maneuverings involving a Kriegsmarine to destroy a new USN the trouble was not to escalate tension, rather it was done in hopes that, through escalating the crisis to a point where the Americans would no longer be willing to raise a bar with us, we would defuse a crisis in our favor. The downside to Jack is that, in a game of chicken, you must rely on the other to give up first. It seems the Americans are not yet ready to give up. Today, our foreign minister's office received a strong letter of condemnation from the American embassy, and they detailed how lucky our Kriegsmarine crew was that no Americans were wounded in the incident, so little detailing how... In full, a portion of the Ice Atlantic fleet had been redirected to Iceland to help enforce Icelandic claims. This has caused quite the stir in the Reich's highest office, as fierce debates roars over whether to continue to escalate or not. On the one hand, retreating now would undoubtedly be quite a hit to our government's image. On the other hand, a fight between the U.S. and the Kriegsmarine would undoubtedly go poorly, even when we somehow came out victorious. We must choose our next course wildly. Well, let's push our luck a bit further. Help get some legitimacy for Hydric. Eric Koch has been injured in the Kiev bombings. Bob Bauman speaking. Who is this? Borman tents in his chair as he pulled a phone to his calls. Calls from American Embassy were uncommon. Calls from the president himself, almost a notif. This is President Nixon speaking. Is Herr Hitler close at hand? Nixon's distinctive voice cut through the air like scissors. Borman raised an eyebrow. Surely he knew about Hitler's state. This was definitely a mere formality. No, Zephyr is up to rest, but I'm willing to take a message. A grunt came through the wire, and Borman tightened a little. After all, there were two reasons for his call, and he was hoping it would be a second. <sighs> Look, we here in Washington have decided that we're willing to orchestrate a mutual withdrawal. We won't bother your fishermen any longer. We're looking for a good diplomatic end to this, and I'm certain you and your fear want this as much as we do. Does that sound acceptable to you, Herr Borman? Borman smiled. The Reich came out on top again. Music to my ears, Mr. President. Wunderbar. Search for opportunities. Send in the SS to make short work of the liberals. Hey, hey, hey. American spy intercepted. Don't ever think about coming back. When will they get the hints? How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? With our newfound influence over matters of governance in the Reich, it's time we implement a policy of favoritism. 
with regards to supply in order to strengthen our position in the run-up to the Fuhrer's eventual passing, it's time for us to allocate a greater amount of supply to shoot Stoffel divisions, which will, of course, negatively impact our rivals in the Wehrmacht and establish where our loyalties lie. There we go. Yeah, well, Gary's gonna side with us. I'm not worried. Supplies of often. <sighs> Wunderbar. <laughs> sure. They've done it. Um, so many wards have never had so little stay. I'll let you guys read this because this doesn't immediately affect us. And since we're kind of. We've probably read this before already, so we're gonna. So many wards have never said had so little say. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and um, let it let it be. I'm sure stuff's gonna go bad in Norway. We'll see what happens there exactly. We'll get our side with Germany. Let's bring some here regiments to our side. And then we gotta figure out. Hmm. How's the construction going? Let me check out. Land forts. Supply the Waffen SS. We'll get these up to, I think, seven. That'll be good. Nice solid number. And then we'll get these guys up to four level two. Next, let's redeploy the here. To succeed in our mission of successfully promulgating the supremacy of a shoot staff of the Wehrmacht, time has begun, come, to strategically redeploy the here for the benefit of the rise, to benefit the rise of the SS. By conducting this seemingly strange maneuver, men, we will further secure the position of the SS with regards to eventually becoming the Reich's main fighting force. Our opponents in the here can whine and whine as we like, and won't change anything. Then we might want to get working on some factories in this little bit. In Mosaland, Elsass, Lothagen. Just kind of so secure. Reinhard Heydrich stood over the tape recorder in absolute silence. His slender fingers laced together. Dr. Brandt's voice crackled in a greeting, which Speer's deep monotone returned. Then came the grave announcement. The fear had fallen to coma, but was not likely to awaken. The tape soon clicked to an end. <sighs> Hitler took a deep breath and stroked the device, his mind adrift on the violent wave of indecision. The fear was on the cusp of death, and Speer was doubtless preparing for the inevitable. His clique of degenerates were not the largest threat, of course. Bormann's corruption had brought him the support in the party, while Scoring's pathetic weakness were perfect for his militarist puppet masters. But Schutzstaffel had to prepare themselves, both militarily and in mind, for the upcoming war that would tear the Reich asunder and usher in a new age of national socialism. Even the Reichstag declared Heydrich to be in the Fuhrer, he would never be able to hold on to Germania as a strategic position. Military preparation had to be made without hesitation or delay. He was torn from his thoughts by the ringing of phone. <sighs> Heil Hitler, came Schwer's deep voice. Reichswehr, I'm sure you would agree that the fear's absence from the public sphere is not going to notice. Dr. Karl Brandt has served Hitler faithfully, and the only thing preventing a fast recovery rate of recovery is Julius Schraub's interference. As he dug the next discussion, you should remove him from his post immediately and publicly condemn him. <laughs> you wish... You want to scapegoat Schaub instead of Brandt? Hydra considered for a moment. Very well. I'll kick that weasel from the party for good measure. Tell Bormann and Goring to condemn him too. We must focus the public's attention on Herr Schaub and away from Hitler, he thought. The curtain is fa falling. Hitler has entered a coma. Uh, we'll get more here. I'm not too worried about factories right now. Kamru Golk wins Welsh elections. Actually, now that I think about it. Instead of mo building up stuff in Mosul, we'll want to get working on stuff in Germania. 
Some of you are wondering, wait, we're not going to control Germania. And you, you're right, but... You know, once we reclaim Germania... You know, I'm I'm going under the assumption people don't know what... Uh, traditional living. Assuming you don't know what happens. Um, let's just say that... Um, it'll be good to have some extra stuff in Germania. Next, we'll pressure the Kriegsmarina. The Kriegsmarina has no... Notorious as being the least political of the three branches of the Wehrmacht, yet also tends to be most pro spear branch. Due to both reasons, it's a possible word. It's where the SS has the least influence, given the importance of Kriegsmarine to the Reich's operation in the events of the war. We must attempt to convince the men of the Kriegsmarine to support her Hydrix bid for the Führer ship to ensure the Reich remains stable. There we go. Let's start her up. Destruction, more forts. Wunderbar. I don't think we'll actually be able to finish up these forts, but it's a nice idea, actually. Economy. What's up our civilian spending? Cut down on the debt a little bit, you know? And up construction. See how much we can't get done. Oh. We're cutting through this shit like paper. My god. They're going the wrong way. I remember this from the England series, so we'll just... Yeah, you know what? We can just wait and pray for their safety. I'll pause and let you guys read it. That can't be right, can it? Sway more here. Let's go ahead, cripple communications. To further destroy their Vemok's ability to counter shoot Stoffel, it's time we truly really separate them from the Wreck at Large by crippling their communiques. If we are to conduct this rapid dubious act, it'll increase our capacity to counter the Vemok in the event of a possible conflict, as we'll be able to far more effectively strike down our opponents, as it will be us who are prepared for war. Hear no evil. Or false faster, a man or shares. The men stood by the sill, calmly, and waited their turn to jump. Tokyo Exchange Secretary, out with a crash. Boom! There we go. Zip power struggle. So Goring and Spear making moves. They can make all the moves they want. Even in their best case scenario, there's probably gonna be some uh some mutinies if you guys if you guys get my drift. Look for opportunities. The SS is acting up. All according to plan. Get more guys, and we might eventually get something for more guns, I think. That might be a good good idea. Got a man on the moon. Still. Probably not still, but... Men moved quickly, but not hastily. They were prepared, experienced. Every action was taken with cold surgical precision. Thousands of them, constructed like clockwork, made their simultaneous moves. The SS had a knack for destruction. They sliced up wires, emulated documents, and brutalized trusted messengers. Every effort was made to blind the prying eyes, amputate the groping hands, and deafen the eavesdropping ears of Hydrix opposition. By the end of the day, orders and communiques descended into confusion and convulsion. Hydrix's own methods of communication stood intact, of course. Information passed smoothly between his commanders and men. They were united in purpose and thought the traitor's rabble, distinguishable only by their specific brand of degeneracy, could not help but feel awe at their own isolation. An entire nation deaf. Now let's, let's do some detente with Burgundy. Over the past decade, relations between the Greater German Reich and the Burgundian Order State have been strenuous, to say the least. Yet, with the appointment of Heydrich as the Führer's successor upon death, it's clear to us that it's only right that we make we make pursue friendly relations up, oops, relations with the Burgundians. Therefore, we shall enact a policy of detente with the Burgundian Order State, thus paving the way for renewed renewal of once friendly relations. Very nice. 
It's going to boost budget. Coming along swimmingly. Maintenance companies, research slots, let's get... What do we even want? I don't know. Um, let's get some base bleed. Nova Sabir. Let's see who ends up winning here. I'd like to see someone... Oh, okay, so we're going after Orotia. Yeah, Nova Sabirsk is out already. It's funny, they've gone from winning almost every game I've seen them... Do? Do we want some military factories? No, not really. More troops. I think just in the long run, it's going to be a better option. Detente with Burgundy. They've accepted our offer of guaranteed independence. Next, let's go ahead and end travel restrictions. Truly improve German and Burgundian relations, we must end all draconian restrictions placed upon the nation over the past several years. The most glaring restriction is probably the odd travel restrictions between the Reich and her western puppet, restricting who can rightfully enter Himmler's kingdom. Now that Herodric's influence in government is secure, we shall end said restrictions, thus allowing all the Germans to fr travel freely between the Reich and Burgundy. Now why the fuck they'd want to do that baffles me, but they can if they want to. And you know, that's, that's all that matters. <clears throat> okay, are they about to... Is Tomsk about to get a two-for-one deal here? I don't think so. I think it's going to be a one-for-one. One. Wait. Wait. Oh, yeah, it's going to be close. Oh yeah, they're encircled. It's it's not looking good for any guys who are still trapped here. Look for opportunities. Autobahn renewal project. It would be a waste. I will get the effects from civilian budget boost. Ikega, okay. Here regiments. Kimarova versus Krasnoyarsk. That could work for them, actually. Improved motorized. At Hokkaido. Alright, we'll go ahead and do stopping sanctions. Do the formerly hostile leadership of the Greater German Reichs attempting to counter Burgundian ambitions, unfair trade sanctions have been placed upon trade with the Burgundian Order State, which ultimately resulted in their weakening economy. However, this will not continue for long. To truly establish cordiality between the Reich and Burgundy, we have little choice but to lift all sanctions upon the state, thus alleviating Burgundy's economic woes and resulting in a strengthening of ties between us and our party comrades abroad. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Bears Niki is still here. That's that's funny to see. They won't last for much longer. Um not even a Falcon can fly in the storm. RIP. Probably have to play as Nova Siberis one of these days, because they do look kinda nifty. What they can do. Special forces. The Rono Conference ends. Let's Scorza. Okay, yeah. I'm not surprised. Seems the AI always goes with Scorza. And... Well, if... She who shall not be named seems to always get fucking picked. Burgundian Reinforcements. With the internal situation of the Greater German Reich quickly deteriorating, despite our attempts to, to the contrary, it seems as if our only hope is to secure the Reich for Heydrich, 
lies within her Himmler's fiefdom, must call upon her Burgundian allies for support. Given our recent relaxation in policy towards the Burgundian order state, her Himmler will surely assist us in claiming the Reich for the Schutzstaffel once and for all. Or we can fucking hope. Bring some more here. We're gonna have a whole fucking extra army. My god, we're gonna have a whole extra army of troops. Look for some opportunities. Veterans demand the share. You know, it's their right, earned in blood. So we have almost no legitimacy. Or, no influence. Is it influence or legitimacy at this point? I forget. Black market's arms increase. I think it's influence, not legitimacy. Let me see. Um, influence, yeah. Can we... We can't decrease that. We need stability, which is something we definitely do not have right now. Yeah, sure. Nine by tragedy, the fascists of Russia perish in a farce. How's Magadan doing? Curious to see they, them win. <clears throat> Free trade was often seen as a sign of opening up to the world around a nation, expanding economic and cultural horizons. This was anything but. Every night a caravan of trucks approached the German border from Burgundy. The driver could hardly be seen through the tinted windows, but a keen-sighted observer would universally see men wearing dark sunglasses, wearing heavy coats. They transported unknown cargo. Nuclear weaponry, poison for the masses, toiletries. No one knew, especially because the usually quiet thorough border guards waved anyone in the particular Burgundian trucks without a second thought. Trucks just kept on coming. The first time in forever, Burgundy was opening up. They were sending their terrible cargo into Germany. More still, still, when the trucks finally entered the Reich proper, they always ended up up at Schutzstaffel offices in the cities with the most support from the newly appointed successor. Soon enough, there were reports of extravagant SS celebrations with specially made Burgundian champagne and some of whatever cargo was in those trucks. Cities supporting Heydrich saw an ever so slight uptick in economic performance just at the moment those trucks began to drive in. Someone west of the border was playing favorites. Foreboding. Ooh. Can we get... Um, let's... D we have a whole army. Let's try to divert some infantry equipment right now. Because we'll probably need that. And we're done. So now we just have to wait for autumn. Oberschafia Blosha was three minutes late, as Heydrich's watch told him. Something simply unacceptable for an officer of the SS. His men were, ex were to be early 15 minutes at least, an hour at the usual, but to be late. This man was luck only lucky that Heydrich had summoned him for duties deemed important by Herr Himmler. He was unlucky enough that those duties would get him killed. <laughs> Sigheil! The man snapped out with a salute that, to anyone else, would have been perfect but on the hand sag at the last moments was enough to show laziness. Or exhaustion, it made no difference. You have orders over Shafiva. Heydrich answered after several long moments, letting Zeissi stare to seep deep in the man like cold water. One given to us by our benefactor to the west. <sighs> Give me the order. Hi, <sighs> Heydrich. man paused at the continued silence before Swan continued. I, I apologize for my tardiness. I I was kept by my duties. One of my men was enough. Heydrich answered, unmoving. He let exactly 15 seconds pass before continuing. I smell the stench of cigarettes, unbecoming of a national socialist male, especially of a member of the SS. It does not matter, however. You will make up for it soon. He raised one hand and the guard by the door, shot Oberschafia Blosha in the back of head. Your sacrifice for the greater good will be all the redemption you need. We lose one whole manpower. 
Uh, poor blow shop did he had no idea what was coming. I mean it feels bad. I I don't feel bad for the Nazi, but he, he shouldn't have showed up. That's the best way to play it. There we go. Blosha had been a suitable sacrifice. A dedicated and loyal man of the SS, but one of too many faults to ignore. His time in Poland had softened him, for while he did everything he'd been asked to do, he'd come to loathe it. The man had started smoking soon after, and drinking, though both in moderation. <sighs> to calm the nerves, he and many of the soldiers would say. Heydrich knew this just meant a heart of cowardice and sympathy for the Untermensch. Still, he had been loyal and his men had seen him as a model leader, always on their side, always looking out for them above all. Another sign of weakness, but at least the one that almost embodied the Aryan ideal. That uh, that that made it almost a shame that approximately 16 minutes ago, if a staff car had meant an empty road that night, his body was to be dumped near Koblenz, shot through the head by a Wehrmacht-issued pistol in an alley on the street known to be frequented by military men on their night off. Heydrich didn't smile, but he took a grim satisfaction in the plan, the fruition of his master's orders, at least implicitly. Tomorrow, there would be blood on the streets and on the Wehrmacht's hands. When possessed by, with the warm, it's almost pathetically trivial to bait a fish. And the hook sinks. Six hours, 14 minutes, and 43 seconds ago, a body had been found in an alley, his men told him. 27 minutes after, sexually identified by the Orpo, with assistance from the SD, the, that the man had been a member of the SS. 40 after, and warded leak that he'd been murdered by young Wehrmachtmann named Hans Freistig, would have found himself promptly beaten within an inch of his life, and then four hours and 10 minutes ago, was shot by SS Sturmann Ludwig Menz, a boy you saw, the deceased SS member, as a father figure. Three hours later, on the dot, when the second passed ten, the Wehrmacht responded by assaulting an SS barracks for the boy. The Reichstag predictably fell into chaos and condemned the Wehrmacht for the murder. One hour and eleven minutes ago, Koblenz burned. As the clock passed midday, Heydrich knew that so too would Germany. And when they are possessed of the mind and spirit of an animal, it is only too easy to make some act as prey. We're diverting some infantry equipment. Hopefully it'll be enough. We have zero influence at this point, but it doesn't matter. I think not. We're build we are building up a lot of PP. I'm like ants, they swarm. 3,000 rifles, 47 tanks, 9 helicopters, and 2,000 men. So far as Don ticked forward, that is what had been reporting missing from the barracks and motor pools across the Reich. Across highways and back roads, armored cars, proudly emblazoned with the twin lightning bolts of the SS, rolled towards destinations unknown. Others were unmarked, moving silently through open towns and past the roadblocks of the army. In Koblenz and Nuremberg, and Munich and Jena, and Chemnitz and Varn, the world burned. SS men exacted bloody revenge. The Wehrmacht did it in kind. The people were just caught in the middle of the black dots of SS vehicles moved towards battle, and many more moved elsewhere, where, with the chaos of a scorched earth, none could notice the swarm. They moved in their nets and crawled into their hives, and there they waited. Soon, a king would fall. Soon, as days were crossed off and hours and minutes dutifully lurched forward, they w the world would change. They would crawl into the fire, from which a new dawn will rise. Sergut, Sergut. Goring's making his moves. He lies catatonic on his deathbed, alone except for his position seated aside. Outside the room lie 100 million souls in terrible waiting, yet his consciousness is in an empty bliss beyond his, this world. His life flashes by him in reverse. He recalls her funeral, how his heart broke, and only his reverence to his motherland remained. The Cathedral of Light during the Victory Parade after the war the long conquest against Judeo-Bolshevism. He mercilessly fought. The world's power in awe of Germany at the Olympic Games, his struggle to break the old order with blood and steel, the house of his parents where he first dreamed to end all dreams. The stream ends with one final shot of morphine. His worn eyes open from the injection. He looks around as if searching for someone, something. Behind the sliver of luminescence left, 
in between the curtains, he sees a Vauxhall bathed in sunlight. He stares at the dome for some time, trying to remember Deutschland, before he hears a whisper, the only voice he ever truly loved. He shifts his gaze, and for a fleeting moment, she's there. Her apparition fading, he whispers his last word, a single tear welling in his eyes. Eva? There were no sounds for a while, except for the faint susurrating of oak leaves and the chirping of barn swallows. The news of Adolf Hitler's passing came after one hour of peace. There will never again be silence for the children of Germania. Farewell, mein Führer. With the uncovering and destruction of the bugging devices in the Berghof, Heydrich had used every means at his disposal to find out more about Hitler's medical state. The old man was unlikely to wake from his coma. Of that he was certain. The question was, when would he die? The rumors had spread like wildfire, first through Germania and then the Reich at large. Politicians discussed it, medical experts debated it, and the common citizen was theorizing about it. The same words were on everyone's lips. The fear is dead. The excitement that coursed through Heydrich's veins was tinged with a slight sadness. The memories of what Hitler had once been were just as vivid as the memories of what he had become. But the generation of the Reich could not be rested at the feet of that senile old man, after all. It was the corruption of Bormann, Goring, Speer, and many others that destroyed the fatherland many years ago. Without a question, history would recall the Fuhrer as a great man of history, as it would for Reinhard Heydrich. The minutes turned into hours. The hours grew into days. Soon the rumors had become fact. The Fuhrer was dead. The Reich was officially leaderless. I see, Hitler, Heydrich muttered into the phone, replying to the voice's claims. He placed the phone down gently, restraining an urge to pound it against the table until it shattered into a million pieces. The Reichstag had just met without inviting the appointed successor. The pestilence infecting the emergency council refused to legally pronounce Heydrich as the new Fuhrer, claiming that now was the time for mourning and not ceremony. Germania had slipped through its fi his fingers, but mattered little. According to his spies, Goring, Speer, and Heydrich had already fled this, this city. There was no time to lose. I think we made and Bormann there, but... There was no time to lose. The road to leadership would be painted red with the blood of his enemies. Extensive military preparations had already been made. It was time to fly west. Never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Something wrong. I hold my head. Hitler's gone. The fear is dead. <sighs> Hitler sat in his office and stared ahead, letting the familiar ticking guide his thoughts. The office was bare, as was befitting to a man of ESS, and only his own mind could rightfully take his attention. But click clacking of boots down the hall let him know that within 10 or 15 steps in 4 seconds, Reichsleiter Bowler would arrive to tell him the news. Operation Ludwig would be, for there was no other alternative, a success. His mind raised for a moment, a pathetic, insidious loss of control that quickly quelled. He remembered the old man. He remembered the coup when he remembered his only crisis of faith. The laugh he had given when Heydrich informed him that he was to be under SS protection. The moment he realized that such an order was impossible. The moment he had understood the level of his failure to her Himmler. The moment he would redeem himself for. A knocking at the door, a greeting, and a salute. No Heil Hitler, not anymore. Bowler gave him a nod as he finished the report that the fear was to be rushed to the hospital. The causes could only be natural. Heydrich stood, carefully folding his arms on his back. It was time to leave. Herbola, there's work to be done. Tragedies consumed Germany as the news spread first throughout the Reich and then the world. Adolf Hitler, fear of Germany, and victor of the Second World War, had died. Whilst the fears declining health had been speculated about for some time, the, state, the news had not nevertheless left Germany in a state of complete shock. The Reichstag has announced that three months of mourning shall be held and that the Fuhrer shall be buried beside his late wife, late wife Eva Hitler, with dignitaries from around the world invited to the funeral. While Germany mourns, internationally many are celebrating the death of the man held responsible for three decades of suffering throughout the world, yet many international commentators fear that what may now become of Germany, the Third Reich having already been embattled in a bitter power struggle over the rightful successor to Führership. 
A day to remember indeed. You know, uh, more on the side. Alright, these guys. I'm not too worried about them. Crisis for the funeral for Adolf Hitler was possibly the largest and most extravagant in history. Thousands of Germans stood in attendance with nearly an entire division of soldiers just for the funeral march, not to mention endless flyovers by Luftwaffe and the constant jockeying for the best spots to show off over a dozen military units, even standout figures such as John F. Kennedy and a representative of Emperor Hirohito were in attendance. Heydrich, Speer, Goring, and Bormann were all in attendance, and all gave their words on their leader's passing. Today is a day of mourning. Crisis has struck Germany. We must be strong in the coming days together. The entire Reich, now is the time for healing. And then they were gone. Not even a half hour after the body was lowered, four staff cars and their convoys were spitting off to parts unknown, preparing for the plans to no... Plans no doubt only just beginning, though. That was abrupt. Since the death of Hitler, Luftwaffe has begun to act awry. The great jetbergs began to fly without command across many areas of the Reich. Luft airfields vacate as seemingly every air wing in Luftwaffe undertakes a great migration, their destinations yet unknown. The strange flocking habits of these Luftwaffe birds is not restricted just for aircraft. Paul Schirmjager divisions to ooh, load up their equipment and personnel into aircrafts with an unwarranted haste. So often to destinations unknown, Luftwaffe personnel seem to be in the midst of an utter abandonment of their post countrywide, with only a scarce few commanders planting their contingents firm upon their assigned airfields. As Field Marshal Spidel frantically attempts to officially ascertain the status of Luftwaffe, motorcades in Germania are seemingly filled with their top brass, leaving their offices for personal reasons, pre planned leave, or simply departing Berlin with so much as a ward to their superiors. Speidel might may not have the official status of Dillemann hand, yet there is no doubt in the minds that any of us is work of old Reich Marshal Goring. His pieces will soon be in place. <sighs> the past week of the Reichstag has been in one another's throats. Over a simple matter of who the citizens of the Reich should hail now that Fuhrer is dead. So always assumed that the next Fuhrer would be saluted. The current chaos... In lack of any real planning for this crisis, meaning that the German people have been left in a state of utter confusion, the Reichstag has bickered and more, the more ideologically minded hailed their chosen candidate for the office. Soldiers hailed their generals or their home cities. Citizens hailed workers in the economy, some still hailed Hitler. It seems as if every German had decided on their own special little salute, and nobody agreed on the and liked one another's. By the end of a week, Heil the Reich had become the most agreed upon salute by the people of Germany, but Nobody seems particularly enthused about it anymore. Can we agree on nothing? Um. Ooh, Borman is making his move. It is time. Men from the here are banning their posts, going AWOL. I'll pause so you can read the rest. And he's making his moves. As a wave of violence continues throughout Germany, Heydrich has now declared himself the rightful fear of all Germany. It's not news for him, but what is news is that the fact that he has called upon his SS to resort order within the country, forces the SS based in elsass Lothringen, conveniently close to the border of Burgundy, in Ostpreußen, in the strongest area of support, have stormed local police stations and mystery buildings with full intent of taking over all of Germany. Thanks to the absolute state of the Reich, however, we can do nothing. And it has begun. Well, they deserve nothing. Spearin's ride is up. Chaos in Ostlin. <clears throat> in the Reichstag, 12 representatives found themselves drinking cyanide, rubbing hands on arsenic, or finding themselves strangled by thin wires in dark corners. A nearby bender block, a truck smashed through the gates and into the front lobby. The bomb blast, approximately 1.2 milligrams in size, tore half of the building's center to the ground and killed four di different senior Wehrmacht of officers along with her staff. Across Germany, the SS stepped out of the dark. They took their posts and roadblocks and barracks. They scattered the Wehrmacht to the countryside and began their grim work. So-called pretenders to his throne reeled from confusion. They sliced away like a trained butcher. Before them, the fat of Germany was minced away. Heydrich's car hit the third bump in the long road to his new headquarters. And then he knew, without even looking to the window, that he had arrived. The war was beginning, but to Heydrich, it was yet just another plan to be inevitably finished to only the exacting standard of the Aryan ideal. Let them know fear as we bring forth the new day. 
And so that's Spear gone. Goring rises up. I'm guessing Kasha is... Yep, yeah, there goes Kasha. The frontier can no longer hold. Okay, yeah. Um. Foreman breaks away. Our eagle is fallen. God hill foons. We'll hold on to this little bit of legitimacy. While tensions have been rising between the various factions of the Reich for years, nobody quite expected the explosion of violence that came shortly after the death of the Fuhrer. Everyone had seen it, of course. The politicians scattering to their homes, the military arming themselves and locking down roads, police taking up their heaviest weapons and barricading their stations. But for an outright civil war? Expect it or not, however, the war is here. Military units have focused their attention on Germania, ensuring the capital remains under military control, but elsewhere the pretenders to the throne of the Reich, have armed themselves, and fighting has broken out across Germany. Speer, Heydrich, Bormann, Goring. Nobody knows which will win, but all the people of a nation know that the dark, the dark days are ahead of them. With Germany in a collapse and anarchy in the streets, foreign powers have already begun debating what to do. The US and Japan have both begun looking into how to best exploit the chaos, and Iberia and Italy have quickly begun unmilitarizing in order to carve out further influence in the chaos. The Reich Commissars, ostensibly loyal vassals of the Reich, sin chaos as well. Their leaders depending on who to support, or whether or not it's time to begin distancing their realms from the homeland. But there will be blood. And the German Civil War will begin. I'm gonna take a sip of water. It's thus necessary that the individual should finally come to realize that his own ego is of no importance in comparison with that of the nation. Adolf Hitler. So it begins. The German Civil War. Alright. Let's organize the affronts real quick. We have quite a bit of troops here, which is very nice. Uh, six divisions... We'll go ahead and put these guys here. For now, we'll get these guys and put them in their own little army. There we are. It's a bit much, but that's all right. What do we have for field marshals? We have Herbert Otto Gilla and Karl Hanka. We'll go with Otto Gilla. For generals, for here, we'll go with... Hugo Cross. And then this guy will go... Otto Kuhn. And then we, got, of course, got to take the tanks out. The tanks and the motorized. Put them in their own little units. Um, these will be our main pusher. Oh, there we go. Put these guys in. Fuck. No, no, fuck. God damn it. There we go. That was too complicated. It should not have been that hard for me to do that. Um, let's go to Herman Price. Actually, I'm thinking we'll replace you with Sylvester Stadler. And then over here, we have five whole divisions. And I doubt they will last very long. We'll, we'll do a fallback line into Danzig and this little province here. And that's all we expect of you guys. Hold the line the best you can. We'll give you... Urban Assault Specialist, which will help us out, especially in Danzig, because that's urban. Free military factories. Right now, I think guns are the big ones to worry about. Free civilian factories. Get working on this, too. Some civic factories to start off with. I think just guns in general right now are a very good thing to start on. Uh, that's all of our units assigned to armies. 
the most part, these guys have their orders, too. Uh, we'll start off putting these guys on the Spearite border. These guys against the Borman border. We will go ahead and do a small line here, and we'll we'll be doing pushes into the Rhine. And it's time to unpause. We'll go down to speed four, and the Burger Creek focus has bypassed. We saw this in our dreams long ago. The end of the Reich, a block the storm of fire and blood, scourging the forest and the mountains of our home. In its path stands a single man, Reinhard Heydrich, true heir of Hitler and former Reichswehr SS of Germany. For the sake of a pure race, for the future of the Reich, for glory salvation, we must win. Heil Heydrich. So we have three picks, white right off the bat. Burgund the Burgundian SS, the Deutsch, the German SS, and the Waffen SS. Trying to remember. I'm looking. We don't want to do the Burgundian SS, from my understanding. Um. Hmm. Yeah, he will not be pleased. Lion Hydrix men and those loyal to him. Receive support from Waffen SS legions. I hear both of these are pretty good. I'm trying to think of. What's the best option? Um, I'm seeing a lot of elite stuff. I'm seeing some elite stuff across here. Bohemian SS. Off an SS. We'll do the. Okay, I'm gonna save real quick to figure out. Just cause, you know, this could go however many different ways. SS uh, Hydric Civil War Go ahead and save These all guys are all organized We'll do the German SS The Burgundians are noble allies Exemplars of all that is good and true in the Aryan race The Waffen SS are legions without number Disciplined and professional But neither can win this war for us this is a German war fought on German soil. Only the b blood of true-born Germans raised in the helmet can redeem the fatherland. It's not being easy path to walk, but it is what must, as opposed to. I think Deutsche. Deutsche SS. So let's take a look at what we got. Reinhard Heydrich. Heydrich has many names. The Blonde Beast. The Butcher of Prague. The Young Evil God of Death. After narrowly surviving an assassination attempt during the World War, Heydrich personally assisted his men in hunting down and wiping out thousands in the former Czechoslovakia. Pictures of him standing triumphantly over the ruins and destruction he had sown were used as German propaganda throughout the war, and Goebbels even, though reportedly rather begrudgingly, had filmed a propaganda film over the matter. Now, however, Heydrich serves a much more sinister cause, a puppet master under a puppet master. On dark strings, he bobs to and fro at the behest of Reichsfuhrer der Burgundischen SS, Heinrich Himmler, to fulfill his will in Germany and abroad, a trusted and feared servant of Burgundy. Nevertheless, many have noted an almost dismissive attitude from his master. Heydrich follows behind no matter, earning him a reputation as a toady and yuppie by many. Of course, none would ever dare say so to his face. Next, we have the German Civil War, of course, and the state of our legitimacy, which is fucking horrible. Of course. 
but we'll worry about that in time. For you guys, we want to do an offensive line to there. And fuck, okay. Attacking there. Okay, well, that's a level 6 fort, Jesus Christ. Already not starting off in the best way. Franco-Burgundian War. I think for now we just let them kill each other. Alright, soldier, you gotta fall back there and then get to Danzig. When I said fall back, uh, fall back. There we go. On Spridel assumes control of Germania. This will distract Goring, which will open him up, leave him more distracted. Well, I'll have to put some troops on this side of things. And hopefully, they're well defended enough that they won't immediately fucking die. And if they do, well, it's... It sucks, but it's not the biggest lost. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll stop that attack, never mind. Instead, we'll do something like this. South African war. Interesting indeed. We will send the tanks to go in there. South African war. Oh, chaos and. No one how to start a war. Yeah, yeah, that's not important to us. Oh, we move into Cologne. Then you follow in behind. Brother fights brother. There we go. We got an encirclement right off the bat. Konigsberg has been captured. People of Prussia are traitor scum. They deserve no less. I'm not too surprised by that. I mean, we weren't even really planning on holding it. Hidden heroes, we must admit, they are very thought-provoking. Let's see if we can't move up here. Formation of the Afka shield. What are they doing? In, in the Dark Continent. That we may never know. We, we, we know. I don't know about the Germans. Okay. Pin them down so we can move a tank in. Donut seizes Crimea. Poland is one. There we go. Oh. Where the fuck are the Yankees indeed? True chaos. When is it going to end though? We'll just attack into this guy right now, try to weaken him up the best. Oh, the ANC is rising up. Very nice. The end of the RK Norwegian. Next, let's go ahead and get some uh, lesser allies. Most German citizens do not have a positive image of Reichsfuhrer Himmler, despite his good intentions. Unfortunately, unfortunate, but that needn't be a hindrance to us. By sacrificing some of Hitler's goodwill towards us, we have made the fear more appealing to the Germans who are not of the SS. A surprising amount of volunteers have come forward to take up arms in his name. No brave soldier shall be turned away in Germany's hour of need. Follow us, bold Aryans. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna take Eupen. However you say it. If I get these guys, just kind of crush the pocket the best we can. You guys join up. And that is 3,000, or 3 divisions. Probably a bit more than 3,000 men. We're about to fucking die. Uh, 
I mean, it's staying red for now. But their org is going down. They're eventually going to start starving out, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's let them regain their org, and then we'll go to, again. Probably get the kill. I imagine. Then for Hydric. Three divisions of civilian volunteers. Strike production. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of guns, so that, that guess was not a bad one. We have control over the Rhine. And uh, we have run out of time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike and want to see more of this content in the future. Go ahead and please hit that sub button. And again, uh, we're trying to get to 1,000 subs by the end of this year. So if we can reach that, I'd appreciate it. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything sort, leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get. I appreciate any all feedback you kind of folks might have from me. If you want to chat or play games, I have a Discord. If you want to send me bucks my way every month, I have a Patreon. And if you want to see me do this sort of stuff live, I have a Twitch. All of which are down link below. Thanks as always for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Dogboat33, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.